Hey, kia ora. I'm Helen Brahms coming to you live from Sun City in Arizona. <laughs> Hope you're having a super fantastic sparkling start to Shake It Up Saturday. I just totally had a mental block at that point in time. So, <laughs> but anyway, it's time to get this party started. So today we are talking, it is Shake It Up Saturday and we are talking, today we're going to talk about six different ways that you can shake up your Saturday or any other day of the week. Um, and I kind of had fun putting this list together. <laughs> I went to all different resources to find different ideas and things. So this comes from a whole bunch, my own thoughts as well as from a whole bunch of other websites as well, just going in and finding some fun stuff that we could talk about. So six ways you can shake up your Saturday or any other day of the week. Um, number one, flush it. If you've got something that is bugging the crap out of you and you can't get your mind off it, what I do in that, um, we always get told in my mastermind group, get off it. How fast can you get off it? So something upsets you, annoys you. Um, it could be an incident that happened to you and it's just bugging you. Know, somebody cut you off in traffic and you're like, no, no, they cut me off in traffic. Well, next time I'm going to do this. And blah, 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 blah. Um, so when you start doing that, stop. Yes, you can allow yourself to think about it for a thing, but remember this, whatever you put out in the universe reflects back on you. Whatever emotions you're throwing off, they will be reflected back to you. So how fast can you get off it? The way I get off things is I pick, I stop, calm myself, take a deep breath, and then I picture myself writing it out on a piece of paper, screwing that piece of paper up, throwing it in the toilet, flush it. It's gone. Take a couple of cleansing breaths, open the eyes, and we're ready to go back in that sparkle mode again. So find ways to flush the things that are annoying you, that you are hung up on. You know, what are you hung up on? Because when you're hung up on stuff, it prevents your forward momentum. Yes, you could still be moving forward, but you could perhaps be moving forward at a faster pace if you got rid of the things that are holding you back. And sometimes when you're looking at, um, at your business and stuff, going, why am I not successful? Take a pause, look back over things, not just the last week or something. Go back further, even to childhood. I had things in my childhood that were holding me back, and I didn't realize that until I learned to release them. Um, and that's, you know, people call it releasing it, getting over it, getting off it. I flush it. Remember, write it down on a piece of paper, write it on a piece of paper, screw it up, throw it in the toilet, flush it. That's my, that's my image. That's the way I get rid of negative stuff out of my life that I can get off it and all of that sort of stuff and then I find and then if it comes back in my mind later on I find a way to find the humor in it so yes there's all sorts of things you can do with that that's kind of fun <laughs> number two childhood play what were some of the things you enjoyed doing as a child was it just going for bike rides with your mates was it um, playing a game of tag um um jeep is playing with play-doh um playing in the treehouse or your playhouse which we'll come back to in a moment <laughs> Was it going fishing, being in a park and flying a kite, going up and down the slides, playing on the swings and everything else? Why not take half a day? Or a day? And if you've got kids or you've got grandkids that are in that young age group around the five, six-year-old thing, but even younger than that too, watch them. Watch the world through their eyes. It is an amazing thing to do. It's to watch them explore things, discover things. And it makes you wonder, it's like, when did I lose my, you know, they're such innocent, they're just wide, they're open, they're, there are these sponges that are just absorbing everything. And you're like, when did I get so cynical on things? When did I get so protective of things? When did I, what happened that caused me to lose that innocence as a child? Um, but discover the world through them. I loved taking my, um, my oldest grandson, when we used to get, I did love taking him to the zoo. Because just to, to stand there and watch him watching the animals or the birds and his just total one. We stood for 30 minutes watching flamingos. Do you know how often flamingos move? <laughs> These ones that happen to be nap time. He stood there for 30 minutes watching flamingos. I kid you not. I just sat there on, I just sat nearby and <laughs> he just stood there watching the, watching flamingos sleep. They're all standing on one leg and they were sleeping. <laughs> I don't know what fascinated him about, about flamingos for 30 minutes, but I got lost in the moment of watching him watch these creatures standing there on one leg with the head turned around and tucked it. Occasionally one would put up and stretch a little bit and shake feathers out and maybe go for a walk. 30 minutes we stood there watching flamingos. It was amazing. It was an incredible, it was an incredible time. I was trying to figure out what was he finding interesting about these creatures, about these birds, 
And so I started looking at the birds while well, keeping an eye on him as well, because he can, he could run pretty fast at that point. Um, but just watching him watch these, watch these flamingos and figure out what was it that was so fascinating. So then I started trying to look at through his eyes, I've got a whole new perspective on things. So start looking at things through your kid's eyes, your grandchildren's eyes. Um, I think of activities that you used to like to do as a kid and go and do them, go do them. Take an afternoon off or take a day off and go do things that you used to do as a child. You know, maybe going to the beach and building sandcastles. You know, it may be um, going, getting on your bike and just going for a ride. Um, it could be going to a park and flying, if you've got the wind, going to the park and flying a kite. Um, what else? Going fishing. Playing with dolls, building with building blocks or Legos. Um, just take time to do a childhood activity and just find the fun and the joy in it again. Something that used to bring you a lot of joy. Find that feeling again. Remember that feeling. What can you now do in your life that can create that feeling for you? Um, number three. So one is flush it. Two is childhood play. Number three, do something different. And this is like go somewhere you've never been before. Maybe even go to the library and take out a book that is different to what you normally read. So you're reading a completely different genre to what you normally read. If you're somebody who likes action, find something that's a non-action book there's plenty of them out there maybe it could be a cozy a mystery a mystery novel instead of an action find a mystery or maybe it could be a cozy mystery those are kind of fun um the ones i'm listening to right now i'm enjoying those and i sorry i totally forgot the name of the series but they're all based in louisiana and i'm on to book three already and they're just really fun fun books i'm also reading um a genealogy series of mysteries as well that are based on actual facts um and they're fun to read too and I had never thought, well, mysteries are the ones I've always liked, but I never thought about, um, never thought about like the genealogy mysteries. It wasn't until um, I started my genealogy business, I suddenly thought, well, maybe I could write a book. Actually, before I started my genealogy business, I had this idea on a, on a story. This is one of my book series ideas. And I'd actually started mapping it out and it, involved, it all revolved around genealogy for one, one of the series revolved around genealogy. And it wasn't until um, a few months ago, I thought, I wonder if anybody's ever written anything, a novel on genealogy. And wow, there's this whole new world opened up for me. Brand new type of, yes, there's still mysteries, but it's based on genealogy. So I thought, that's really cool. Um, so find something you've never, that you don't typically read, take a book out and read it. It's a library. You don't have to go buy it. You just go to the library, get a book and try it. Maybe try a different author. Maybe you have a really favorite author that you love and you only read this. Try a different author in the same genre or try a completely different, you know, yeah, try a different author in the same genre that you like to read as well. You never know. Um, there's, um, oh, what's the name of that thing? BookBub, B-O-O-K-B-U-B dot -O -O -B -B com. And they put on there all these different Kindle books that are for, that are um, on, on sale or some of them are even free. I built up my, <laughs> I built up a majority of my Kindle library getting the free ones. And if you're a, a Prime member, um, every month and you've got your kit and you've got a kindle every month on the first of the month they send you a list of books that you can go and get one of those for free i have discovered some amazing authors that way so once a month i pull out a new i go through i read yeah those ones in the genre that are like oh but hang on this one here sounds really interesting and i'll have like three or four windows open going and reading more information about the books before I, and then i'll read one and i'm like yeah we'll actually read that no click gone and now and then that's how I, and i narrow it down and so I'm um, sorry someone's getting my eyes um, <laughs> but it's a really interesting way to approach reading is that you go and find these places where you can get the free Kindle books or even if you're with Kindle Unlimited you can um, go read as many books as you want during the month for free um, so try different brands and, and genres and stuff so that's how I find new authors and new series and things like that plus I also get recommendations from friends as well so that's another thing you could do Number four, turn it off. Turn off the social media for a day. Turn off the computer for a day. Turn off the phone for a day. Just have an electronic free day. That's usually my Sundays. Sundays are my day. I try not to be there. I'm only online definitely twice a day. Once in the morning to do my live and once in the evening to do that live. And that's it. Um, and then I will answer my text messages from my mom. Um, because you have to answer text messages from mom. Because she gets panicked otherwise. Um, <laughs> but apart from that, I typically don't answer the phone on a Sunday unless it's somebody I want to talk to. Um, so if, if you call me on a Sunday and I don't answer, please don't take offense. Um, I'm, we'll use that day to watch movies, um, just to kick back, relax, read, 
um, go for our, we go do our Sunday mystery drives. We never know where we're going. Um, although our Sunday mystery drives are probably going to take a little more form coming up. We're working on something with that. So we'll see how we go. But, you know, ditch the electronics for a day. Turn off the social media for a day and go social media free. You know, don't go checking on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Oh, my God, TikTok's such a time waster at times. Um, I could lose hours in that thing. Um, whatever, the, whatever the social media platforms are that are out there these days, <laughs> stay off them for a day. Try it and see. Can you do it? Can you stay off your Facebook messengers? Can you stay away from your message programs? Can you stay away from your social media platforms? For a day, from when you wake up to when you go to bed, can you have a media, a social media blackout? Um, I challenge you on that one. <laughs> Number five, crazy clothes. Like if you, if you're somebody who wears a lot of muted colors, try something bright. Um, if you're somebody who likes a particular color, try a different color. Um, if people know you for a certain color or a certain style of clothing, try something completely different. Um, it could be something as wearing odd socks. It could be as crazy as wearing a pink polka dot shirt um, or one with stripes, pink stripes. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> if you usually wear dark colors, try light colors just for a bit, just for a day and walk out like you have no, and when you put clothes on, have no care in the world of how you look. Just go out there and um, just see how it makes you feel. Because sometimes putting on different colors or different types of clothes can make you feel a very different to how you normally feel, does it? And it shakes you up a little bit. It's like, you know, put on something you can go have fun with. Um, put on a costume and go walking around, go, shop, go shopping in the supermarket or something. You know, do something crazy. Um, you know, try polka dots and stripes and plaid and paisley, wild colors. You know, dress up, you know, oh, this is, oh that would be a good one. This just this just popped into my head, so I want to see how this, if this comes out right. Um Think back to your childhood, what you used to wear as a kid, what the fashion style was around when you were growing up. Like I came through the 70s and the 80s um, and go back and dress in that fashion from that period and just go out and have fun. <laughs> that would be a fun thing to do. Um, and then number six is dream time. Pull out your dreams. Wherever you've got your dreams written down, your dream boards and that. When was the last time you looked at them? When was the last time you wrote in your dream journal? And go and look at those. Is there a particular house that you, wanna, that you want that's your dream house? Go see if there's a, um, I mean, there's a lot of building going on around different areas and things. So go walk through their model homes, get ideas for your home. I mean, you know, their, their model home may not be your design, your um, dream home, but there could be decor in there that you would like to put into your dream home. Take pictures of them so you can go add it to your journal, build your journal. If you want to go, you know, if you want to go um, buy an RV and, you know, go living on the road, Go to an RV show, find an RV show and go there or go to a sales yard and find one and just go wandering around and have a look and see what's out there, what's available, what features do you like, what features don't you like. Because some people, they think, oh, it would be great to go to an RV, da, 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 da. But when it comes down to it, what do you actually want in an RV? And start, look, start, so start the initial thing. Because when I first started, when I first decided back on the 15th of March, um, 2018, 18. Yes, 2018, 15th of March, 2018, when I decided I was going to go live in an RV, I had no idea what I liked. I didn't know. I wasn't interested in fifth wheels, but I did still look at them just to be sure. Um, it was a thought of towing things, and so they were out the tow trailers because I'd never towed anything before. Um, and so I was then looking at Model C, at the Class Cs and the Class A's. I also looked at the Class Bs, which are the converted vans. So um, go out, take time to have a look and find out what is it that you like. Um, if you've got a dream car, what do you know about your dream car? Have you ever test driven your dream car? Um, and now I know some are exotic cars and you have to provide like everything before they leave and leave and allow you behind the wheel of the car. So well, maybe there's something that's a step up from what you've got now. Um, you know, mine wasn't that thing, but you know, maybe there's a, just go out and have a look. What things do you have in your dreams? Have you gone and had a look? Maybe you want to buy a boat. Go down to a boat sales. I don't even know where you'd find a boat sales yet, but I'm pretty sure they're out there. Go down there and have a look around and, walk through them, get the feel, and the whole idea is to get the feel of them to engage your sen all your senses. You're getting the, you're hearing, you're smelling, you're touching, you're not tasting. Although that would be really weird if you bent over and tried to lick a bench on an RV or something. I don't know, that would just be too weird. Um, <laughs> but, you know, go and try these things. And so you get the taste and the feel, well, the, the feel of them and how do you feel in that space? 
what do you like what do you normally do in your day so that you can see does your work does your daily flow fit around the thing i knew when i got an rv one of the things i definitely wanted that i worked out very quickly after being through two rv after being through two rvs I worked out very very quickly one thing i definitely had to have and it was a non-negotiable item and that was having a fixed bed a bed that could stay made up even while traveling and that you had access to while you were traveling so if you want so if you pull into a rest area and you wanted to go and take a have a lay down and have a snooze you could do that the other thing that was that was important was i had to be able to access the refrigerator and my food cabinets because if I stopped for a meal, I didn't want to have to put it, I wanted to be, have access to my kitchen area without, um, so that I could prepare meals for myself when we were on the road. Because there's times that we will stop in a, um, in a rest area or something, we'll get out, we'll go for, a, Steph and I'll go for a walk, come back. And I thought, you know, I feel like a sandwich. And so I, I've, I'm able to get to my refrigerator, I'm able to get to my dry goods, and I'm able to stand there and make a sandwich, wash my dishes afterwards, put them away and get back on the road. Sometimes if I'm forward thinking, I'll make the sandwich up before we leave in the morning so it's sitting in the refrigerator. But, you know, think about your lifestyle. What the, and how is that lifestyle going? How is your lifestyle going to fit into an RV? And, fi and then go find the layout that works best for you. So that's always fun things to do. You know, go dream. So there's your six, six things. <laughs> six things to shake up your Saturdays. Flush it. Get rid of those negative thoughts that are holding you back. Or those negative events that happen that are holding you back. Um act like a child go do childhood things think of something that used to bring you joy as a child and go do it today um except for things like water balloons at people unless you're doing it with friends and you're having a water balloon fight and that would be really cool um do something different go somewhere you've never been before try foods you've never tried before go to the library get a book um by a different author you've never read before um try a completely different genre to what you normally read um even with music um all that sort of things go on a social media blackout for for a day <laughs> no messages no texts no phone calls no nothing just turn it all off turn off the computers turn off the laptops turn off the tablets turn off the phones for a day um go crazy with the clothes wear clothes you've never worn before or clothes that you used to wear in your child not clothes you used to wear in your childhood clothes like the ones you used to wear in your childhood or go back to a um, i mean you can pick up great stuff at thrift stores as well so it doesn't have to cost a lot to go find something crazy that you're going to go and wear um and then take time to go out and dream and find the things that you want you know um go through if you're looking for a new home go through model homes to get decorating ideas i i used to do that all the time walk through model homes and take pictures of different um <clears throat> different things that they had the ways they had rooms set up um different colors that they had how they had the neutral colors but the pop of color that they had um just to get decorating ideas on how to um decorate a home or it could be that um you may even find an area rug that you like you never know um but you don't know unless you try if you're wanting to go buy an rv or something go start visiting rv yards or find an rv show rv shows are better because you have multiple you have different sales people all around different um RV retailers will be there with their RVs and things. Um, and a lot of times you don't get hassled <laughs> because they don't have enough salespeople to have one in every of the RVs that they have. Um, but, you know, you can go look around, find what you like, what you don't like. And, uh, you know, same with boats and yachts and things. Go to a, wherever they have the shows and walk around them. And, you know, start, the shows are starting to come back. So start going to them. And, you know, they've got home and, I saw a thing for a home and garden show. Oh, well, that would be really cool. Um, you know, go to the home and garden show and get ideas. Um, those are always, I love home and garden shows. Those are always such great things. Um, so there's all sorts of different things that you can do to go and find out, you know, that you want this type of, maybe you want a log cabin, go wherever they have the log cabin shows. Maybe it's a home and garden show. Um, go find out about log cabins. Um, uh, believe me, I've done a lot of research on log cabins because that's my dream home is a log cabin by a lake. Um, surrounded by trees. <laughs> I have a very particular, I know exactly what I want. I just don't know where it is. I've got to find the lake. Um, so I know exactly how the, I'm still formatting the inside of the log cabin though. That's my, so I don't know where my, where my lake is. And so I have to find my lake and I've got to look, figure out the layout of the inside of the log cabin. I haven't worked that out yet. But ask me about anything else around the log cabin that I have, the other buildings that I have, the RV pads that I have. I can tell you about them right down to the details. But I cannot tell you the inside. I can tell you what the outside of my log cabin looks like. I can't tell you what the inside of the cabin looks like. So 
you know, I've got some streaming still to do. But anyway, that's it for that's it for oh, and um, going back to your treehouse or your playhouse, that's your question of the day. Did you have a treehouse or a playhouse? And what are some of your favorite memories from that time? Did you make it your clubhouse um, where you and your friends could be, you know, you had the no girls or no boys signs up? Um, <laughs> that sort of thing. We had, um, we had a garden shed we got to use one time as a playhouse that was decked out for us kids to play in. Um, we had, um, my dad built me one when I was like around four or five. And I remember getting a small paintbrush and helping him paint it. It was green. And he made his really cool doorbell, which was a bottle opener, a spring and a tin can. And you'd pull the bottle opener, you'd let it go, and it would ding on the back of the tin can. And that was my doorbell. I love that doorbell. <laughs> I've had many blanket forts over the years. always like my blanket forts. Um, but anyway, go have fun with that. Tell, you know, and we're still looking for your family tree questions as well, because like I said, very, very soon, we're going to be setting up our family tree answers podcasts. So I need your questions. So if you have questions, private message me or put them in the comments below but go out have a super fantastic sparkling shake it up saturday i'm about to go hop on a zoom with um somebody who i have an acquaintance with but this is not anything that is business related we're going to be talking personal related so we're going to get to know each other on a completely different level and i am so looking forward to that conversation so go out have a super fantastic sparkling shake it up saturday and we'll catch you guys back here at around 6 p.m this evening Hack on out